Hello YouTube viewers, welcome to my channel Science to Technology. In today's show, Computer Witness Day, we're going to talk about EMMC. So let's dive right into it. Now, before we understand EMMC, we have to understand the need for something complicated as that. Well, we wanted a standard for portable devices, meaning something that is very small, like a Raspberry Pi, some other single board computer, laptop and uh, mobile phones, uh, Chromebooks. Basically, is something that is inherently small, where you cannot have the luxury of just plonking a SSD. And it had to be a cost effective for general use. Now, this is one thing. Every Tom, Dick and Harry wants, like, you know, the latest and greatest. Can they afford it? Yeah, no. So that's the whole reality. This is something that people knew from day one. It's like it has to be cost effective now it has to be cheaper than nvme obviously nvme is ludicrously expensive just the controller itself is bankruptcy level of expensive then you have also have to understand sata sata is also not cheap because the nand flash is cheap the sata controller is expensive so it these are the two criteria it must be cheaper than them and it should be standardized in such a way that oem can mass produce it meaning samsung toshiba other manufacturer nand flash, uh, other companies that are making that they should be able to like control c control v as many as they need few million pieces per year something like that so that has to be done and to make sure the cost is not too ludicrous it has to be no royalty charges meaning people who are implementing this puppy cannot be asked to pay for it and again there are many standards that uh, uh, you know adhere to the for example sd card bluetooth but many there are not like for example dvds blu-ray you have to pay sony for that so this is one of those things that like they wanted to make sure this is something cost effective from day one to everything including paperwork also so this was the need so in 1997 multimedia card was launched and uh, basically that is MMC. Now, when you talk about eMMC, all you are talking about embedded. Embedded was specifically built so it can be put inside mobile phones and laptops. Basically, anything that is low cost and uh, you know does not require to be huge. Generally, eMMC was the choice. Now, eMMC and SD kind of became intermingled after a while because in the early days you can easily tell which is SD, which is eMMC. Like uh, they were not backwards and forwards compatible. But over time, SD can read eMMC. Be mindful of that. If you have a, a SD card reader and if the driver is in a proper way if you have like you know old uh, multimedia card you can just plonk it it will read properly so it is one of those things there's like you know sd association kind of adopted this and uh, you have to understand this does have more parallel interface because you can understand like this is an old standard but still had more pin exactly like how uhs2 has this from day one was designed such a way that it can you know truly flex its muscle it had much more par uh, you know parallel interface capability so whenever you are talking about emmc you are talking about this chip now what exactly this chip has this chip even though it looks like one chip it is like you know multiple things inside it first thing is flash memory so do not make this step like this is flash memory itself it has flash memory plus the controller in it so as you see ssd ssd have multiple flash chips then it has dram module power driver module and then the controller all of that put inside one thing that is this and generally they are packaged in what we call ball grid array because again it's inherently small you're never gonna find a pin array system for that and that's an ic package that you can order from companies and then you can put it in your raspberry pi put it in chromebooks put it in your cheap mobile phones that's what you have to supposed to do and the standards of these are locked meaning even cross compatible you can literally have a mobile phone manufactured by uh, you know whoever is manufacturing your motherboard and then you can run a production line and you can have like hey for 512 samsung is giving good prices for 256 samsung is not quite effective but toshiba is you can put their memory there because again they are kind of like standard how many balls are there like uh, what is the pin layout all of those are standardized so you can literally before you start developing you can just call up uh, the developer and be well like, hey i want like you know this ic package ic package are uh, basically standardized against all things it's like every other cross compatibility is there so you do not you are not locked like, hey i'm locked to samsung now you, you can use whatever company that is manufacturing that standard so there have been many versions of this now be very mindful emmc while many times people say it's just a sd card that is directly soldered on which is true and not true at the same time but it is far more stable and robust that is why like even though in early days of android you could run apps from uh, basically your sd card sd cards were not go uh, going through such a high tolerance of uh, what we call quality control and sd cards were very cheap now emmc was like serious business so emc was like there was a cost limitation like you cannot embed emmc below this cost that's why like early raspberry pi did not have 
had that as an option because they wanted they knew for a fact that if they cost, cut down the cost beyond a certain point it becomes garbage so emmc from day one had a quality control to it whereas like no we're not going to give you something barely working the quality control was good that made it stable and robust for operating system use so android can utilize it properly and so is iphone also and over the years performance demand went up meaning uh, early days 10 mps good now it's like dude we got 100 now we need even 200 so performance demand went up so multiple generations were created exactly like how sd card went from sd uh, you know sd sdhc sdxc exactly they keep increasing this capacity and speed same thing was done here now emmc 5.1 basically the latest iteration right now it can give you 250 mbps write and 125 mbps read so you may be like wait a minute that's not that fast that's almost same as like you know good quality mechanical hardware well yeah that's the whole point that's why like whenever you talk about flagship phones they generally do not use mmc anymore simply because mmc is barely good enough it's it's robust it's stable but it's not that good and uh, that's the whole point it's still no, uh, not even close to basic SATA. basic SATA that you can buy right now even the cheapest one can easily do uh, 250 right and almost 400 read so this whole point of like emmc 4.5 uh, which you can still buy because this was launched with around uh, the same time as snapdragon 800 uh, it was like around 140 read 50 right and that was the issue that's why like many times you're like true when your mobile phone has this many cameras why can't you parallel record it is the right speed is not fast enough even though processor can process it inherently it can do that that's how it's doing the ai computation it can't just feed it to the card card will be like dude i can't handle this so that is the limitation of this chip that you see so flat out uh, low speed is becoming an issue because even the 5.1 is only 250 uh, you know read speed which is good but 125 write speed and at this point in time you know for a fact that even gopro can exceed this sort of uh, limitation random io ops are good but not that good so that is why uh started to emmc was started to linked with low speed low speed was linked with poor experience meaning if you have a cheap phone it had emmc you had poor experience because even though inherently operating system is fast your ram is fast your cpu is really fast you know, your speed is always limited by the slowest component in the system the slowest component was this puppy so that is why even with all these version updates it never uh, you know shook its image of like you know being a cheaper alternate so a new king started to interfere in the market that is ufs universal flash storage new format it was like you know uh, shoehorned by samsung and uh, the idea was behind this is like they studied emmc because be mindful emmc is supposed to be a cost effective option so you cannot judge it hey it's not fast enough it's like dude it's supposed to be cheap so again there is a compromise but whenever you are creating a new format you want to learn from like you know best of everything so first thing they fixed it's became full duplex rather than singplex it's now full duplex meaning read and write can be done at the same time what does that mean that simply means in the older emmc architecture Architecture, you could have a scenario where it's like you are capturing a video awesome that video has to be sent to your uh, ram for buffer sake and then it goes through, uh, from ram to your flash okay that sounds awesome but here's the deal if your memory controller is inherently uh, what we call simplex it has to wait basically hey uh, i need data for operating system camera just fill up the ram okay i connected data now dump that like there is a extra latency there that inherently means the pipe bandwidth is low even though technically you should be able to do at like you know 50 60 mbps realistically you will be barely able to do 30 that's the whole limitation for that because it has to go to the ram because while you are reading it then go there so that's why many times even if you go from duplex to simplex on lower speed equipment you still get better performance and that's why all server sas drive sas drive they generally have uh, you know sim uh, duplex built into that so ufs2 uh, generally from day one they was built in such a way it can do duplex without any issue meaning your can operating system can read data directly from the memory while it's writing on the memory so it does not have to wait and like you know uh, queue it up then it also has command queuing meaning operating system can intelligently pile up cases it's like we know for a fact that you're gonna need this like can you queue it up queuing it up makes it far more efficient it's like uh is how how m1 is so efficient is this that like if you can do file queuing proper uh, file queuing up process properly with io request it's very efficient that's why it was built into that now it also has a lot of new feature sets again there are like 10,000 feature sets that if you have to read through the white paper from samsung you can find out what exactly things are doing but there are some things that are inherently focused on one thing better integration because system on chip is only as good as how is the slowest link so if the slowest link is better integrated even with a poor speed it can still perform better so it has deep sleep meaning imagine your phone at night nothing is happening on that your memory can go down on very low power state benefit it allows to save power 
Another thing, it cannot be done unless you know how to talk to the goddamn operating system and uh, system on chip has to know that like, hey, memory went into deep sleep. So deep sleep does require communication. That's why it has to be built integrated from the memory chip itself. Then you have throttling notification. For example, these things are thermally sensitive. If your processor in that place, SOC starts to get hot and this also starts to get hot because you are writing a lot of data into it and your vapor chamber that is your mobile phone is not able to cool it down, it will start to throttle. Now, back in the day, it could uh, release, uh, you know, directly translate into corrupted file uh, your phone uh, hanging things of that nature but bond systems knows for a fact that something is wrong in those sort of scenarios it can trigger a red alert to operating system and operating system can shut down background operations ideal scenarios if thermal throttling happens you will never notice it because it will be like it will be dealt with in the background processes but that's the one of those things like better integration where it's like you know it's not just dumb device it's like okay i'm talking with you can you give me you know better instruction can you queue it up properly can you go down to sleep i do not need to you know waste power on that so all these things translates to much better user experience and the speed wise is tangibly better it's almost like nvme for uh, you know mobile phones <laughs> ufs 2.0 goes up to 1.2 gbps is too late very fast and 3.0 goes around 2.9 gbps it's fast it's faster than what my current ssd does so be mindful like if you have ufs 2.0 it's very fast and with all the integration and uh, you know queuing command queuing it's really efficient however it is very expensive that is one of those things like it's very new so it's inherently very expensive and the company did try to basically samsung did wanted to make a sd card obsolete by utilizing this it did not pick off it was like launched around 2016-17 even you may have seen some uh, basically youtubers talking about this but it never came to be because like sd card was good enough it was like why the heck you need faster sd card so UFS did not succeed in that card department, but it did succeed in replacing MMC for high-end devices. High-end devices like Dune, we shall not use MMC, we should always use UFC, UFS, pardon me, UFS. So what we can expect in the future? At this point in time, there is a lot of life left in EMMC because simply because it's low cost. Inherently low cost is one of those things that everybody hates, but they have to buy it because again, not everybody is rich. So single board computer like Raspberry Pis and all that just low cost smartphone. Like basically I generally prefer buying smartphones that are around lower than 20,000 rupees. So it's very unlikely that I'm gonna get a UFS for that. And uh, Chromebooks, again, Chromebooks are inherently cheaper. They are inherently designed for students who does not have very deep pockets. So you get the point, it does have lifespan left there however over time it will be displaced by ufs uh, the reason for that is simply production once you start to like why we don't see lcd in your mobile phones that much simply because lcd is now a bit more expensive than oled once you start to manufacture mass manufacturing has the ability to make any expensive thing cheaper just by mass producing so think of it this way samsung right now you can buy emmc and you can buy eufs now, if the company decides, Samsung decides, you know what, EMMC is not longer profitable, we want to, you know, make UFS far more profitable, they can just shut down the EMMC line and move it into UFS manufacturing. At that point in time, UFS price will drop, meaning high-end uh, MMC will cost same as low-end UFS, and UFS is inherently superior. So at that point, there will be transition. At that point, the end... Now again, there could be some leftover simply because uh, MMC is inherently simpler as in like your microcontroller has to be simpler to read it right on it and all that jazz. So it could still last a bit longer than that because it UFS does require some expensive processing in order to deal with it. But other than that, it's not a long lasting thing. Basically, MMC is not something here for a very long time. I expect like 5-10 years maximum. And not to mention, folding smartphones are so expensive, none of the folding phones have MMC. All of them are UFS. And again, any high-end phones, any phone that is around 30, 35,000 rupees, generally they are uh, UFS. So this was my presentation on basically EMMC. Hopefully you have liked it, learned from it. In that case, please click the like button, share it amongst your friends. That will help me a lot. If you didn't like it, didn't enjoy it, I urge you to press dislike, press it twice to show me extra disappointment. Please leave a comment because I do try to reply to all of them. Subscribe, press the bell icon if you're free. And as always, thanks for watching.